Hi guys, Mr. Off Waffles here. There are three challenges you need to complete to activate the Pack-A-Punch machine on Dead of the Night. I'm gonna go through each challenge one by one now, but you can do these in any order and you can do various bits at the same time as others. You don't need to do it sequentially as I'm doing it in this video. To begin with, you need the Sentinel Artifact, just like you do in pretty much any of your games on this map. It's located opposite the spawn, run through the corridors, by the doors, hold square on the artifact, and Bob's your uncle, you're ready to go. The first challenge I'm going to show you is the Blue Crystal Challenge. For this one, you're going to want to come down to the Wine Cellar, and there'll be some vases down here that you need to break open to find a crystal. You can tell which vase is the right one because it'll have a little smoky effect coming out of the top of it. As you can see in the gameplay here, there's a vase on the left hand side of the room and there's another vase on the right hand side of the room as well just by that table. If the crystal isn't at one of these two locations in your game, then just look around the room for a vase with that smoky effect, like I said. When you've broken open the vase and you've exposed the crystal, you need to get a number of kills nearby the crystal. This is just a soul box. It actually varies how many kills you need to get, depending on if you're in a solo or co-op game. Solo right now, I believe, is four, whereas co-op can be up to eight, nine, or ten. Get the kills near the crystal, though, and once it's charged, you'll be able to go over to it, hold square and get a vision. For the blue crystal, this will always be a perk machine. And what the vision is indicating for you to do is just run over to that perk. I'm going to show you all five, that's right, not four, five perk machine locations in Dead of the Night right now. They randomize each game so they won't always be in the same place. And so if you get told that you need to go and see Odin, for example, you're going to probably have to check multiple spots before you actually find what you're looking for. The first three spots that I'm going to show you are ones that, as far as I'm aware, you get for this challenge much less frequently. They are as follows. One location is above the wine cellar in the entrance hall. Then if you go down the stairs back into the wine cellar, there is another location in there. I normally don't get either of those for this challenge. There's also then a third perk location just outside the front of the house, as if you're on your way to the forest. And then the final two locations are on opposite kind of wings of the map. One is in the greenhouse area. You face the greenhouse, take a right, and you'll find your perk out there. And the other, which I had in my game, is in the cemetery. You're going to go through the cemetery to the mausoleum, and your perk machine will be inside. The way the challenge is going to work is you run into the area where your perk is located, and you'll get a weird filter effect on your screen. Vampires will start to spawn in, and you just need to kill about five vampires while this effect is on your screen, and the last one you kill will drop a tuning fork. That's the sign that your challenge is complete, so you can now move on to another one of your crystal challenges. The next one I'm going to show you is the green crystal challenge. This crystal can be found in the study or in the library, so I'm going to show you the three spawns for it now. There is one vase that you'll need to break, which could have the crystal inside, upstairs, just on this kind of coffee table thing here. Then downstairs, there are two spawns in the library itself. One is going to be on the left hand side of the room. And then if you swing around here, there is another possible spawn on the right hand side. Break open your vase and then fill the crystal with souls. When it's filled, you'll be able to gaze into it again, just like you did with the blue crystal. And you'll be shown one of three clocks. Just like before, the vision is indicating that you need to go and find the clock that you've just been shown. There are three clock spawns. One is going to be here in the dining hall, just up against this wall here. If you make your way through to the main hall, you will find another clock right in front of the Atlas statue. Note that both of those clocks were larger ones, whereas this third one I'm about to show you, which you can find if you run up and through to the billiards room, is, as you can now see, a smaller clock. So that gives you an easy way to distinguish this one from the others. When you find the clock that you've been shown and you go up to the front of it and hold square, you will start a challenge in which you need to stand in a blue circle and just kill zombies for about 30 seconds or so while as the game calls it, the clock is set. There'll be a timer on the floor, and the numbers on the clock will vanish as you get closer and closer to completion. One thing I think a lot of people don't realize about this is that you don't have to stay in the blue circle for the entire time. If you get overwhelmed, 
you're completely fine to leave the circle and go back into it. You'll just resume where you left off. However, if you do stay in the circle for the entire time, you'll get a trophy. So there's pros and cons to both. When you stood in the circle for your 30 seconds or so and the clock is fully set, the blue circle on the floor will vanish and another tuning fork will drop out of the clock itself for you to pick up. You're now onto your third and final challenge, the purple crystal challenge. This crystal can be located on the opposite side of the building to the green crystal. There is one spawn for it just here. As you can see, once again, we're going for vases. Then there is another just to the side here. It's going to be in that vase once again. And then there's a third possible spawn as well, just sort of looping around here, which also might be where the crystal is for you. For me, my crystal's at the foot of the bed. We're going to charge it with souls once again. And then once that's done, we're going to gaze inside and it's going to show us an object. This challenge is a little bit more complicated than the other two challenges because there are a greater number of objects that you could be shown. However, I think I've got a list of all of them. I waited a little bit before I put this guide up to try and make sure that I had them all. So we should be good here. But if there is an object that you're shown that I don't go on to talk about in this video, drop a comment down below and I'll add it to the description for people. Starting off at the Atlas statue here, if you take a left, you'll see that in the East Gallery, there is a painting of a girl in red looking scared. That is one of the possible objects you could be shown by your purple crystal. Another possible painting is just towards the east stairway here, and that's going to be a girl holding an apple. Then if we double back and head along the corridor, you can find another painting in the music room, this time of a girl with her hands kind of scratched out. She's in a red dress looking pretty serious this time. Rotating to the entrance hall, you can find a doll sitting on this counter, and it's a very spooky looking doll at that. If we then head towards the billiards room, before you get there, you'll find in the smoking room, there is another painting of an old man with a younger woman in a red dress once again. If you then run from the smoking room to the billiards room and then through to the study, Upstairs and on the left here in this corridor, you should find a red chest and that's actually the item that you need to find if you get shown a scroll. It's going to be a last will and testament and it's actually inside that red box. Then if you run through to the tea room, there will be two pictures of maids here. One will be on the side and she looks very scared and her hands are all scratched out. That's the one you'll probably get in your game. And there's another one just around the corner in case you get that spawn as well. There's also a noose in the wine cellar. If you come down the stairs on either side, you should be able to find it hanging over the back of a chair. Those are all the locations I have for items. But once again, let me know in the comments down below if you get any extras and I will update the description for everybody. Just like the other challenges, when your crystal shows you one of those things, you just need to run over to it and hold square. This time, we'll get a ghost spawning out of the object and that ghost will need to be escorted to a new location on the map. So you need to stand with the ghost in order to get it to move and walk with it until it gets to its final destination where it will disappear. And when it does so, you will have a tuning fork spawn in its place. One thing to be careful of is that as you just saw in the gameplay a moment ago, the ghost will often go through walls and it will also go through doors that you haven't bought yet and force you to go around through a different route to meet up with it on the other side. Obviously, it's a ghost. It can do what it wants. And when this happens, don't panic if you lose it. Just loop around via an alternative route and you should be able to resume right where you left off walking with the ghost. Now, another thing to note as well is that the ghost goes to different areas of the map entirely depending on what item you originally picked up. So the doll, for example, that baby, for me, has gone to the cemetery most times, whereas this painting here seems to have taken me in this gameplay to the complete opposite side of the map. It won't always be the same place, so just keep that in mind while you play. You'll at this point have three tuning forks, and that means that you can now open the Pack-a-Punch area. The pap is located at the front of the building. You're going to go towards the forest and the big red swirly mass thing here can be destroyed by holding square on it with your tuning fork. You'll then be able to go through the gate. There will be a werewolf that spawns in, but just pop your specialist weapon to kill it. Or if you're doing the Easter egg, try and kill it with silver bullets and then head down the pathway to the Pack-a-Punch machine. I'm going to show you the machine itself now and then I'll show you the pap camo on a couple of different guns because I think I think it looks fairly nice on this map. It almost gives me like a weird World at War vibe for some reason, just I guess because of the sort of silver overlay. I think it looks pretty cool and it fits the aesthetic of the house well. 
I just wish that we'd get something other than the kind of jello effect underneath, swirling around there looking like a heap of the other camos already do. I think it's pretty good though, and obviously in case you've not done it before, pack-a-punching means you can increase your damage now, so pack-a-punch multiple times, get your AATs as well, and generally go to town. Congratulations, you made it! Thanks for watching the video guys, I've tried to keep this as concise and no nonsense as possible. Fingers crossed it has been effective. On screen right now, there'll be some links to other guides for this map if you need those too. So click on over and I'll see you soon in more Black Ops 4 Zombies videos. Bye for now.